Well, Dr. Matthew Daly is a senior investigator at the Kaiser Permanente Institute for Health Research. I asked him what's behind the explosion of cases and the number of deaths in the Philippines. Well, you know, measles is a deadly disease. Um, you know, most people who get measles don't have those serious complications, but some do. Young kids, the elderly. And typically when you see a measles outbreak, it's because of a failure of vaccination. It just means there's not enough of the community that's vaccinated. And then if we look at why, why is there a low measles vaccination rate? It's typically because parents have some concerns about the safety of the measles vaccine. Mm. But there can be other barriers. And in some place like the Philippines, there may be other barriers where there's not ready access to the vaccine as well. I thought it was interesting that the health worker quoted in Barnaby Lowe's report seemed to be suggesting that part of the problem is that there's been so much success with vaccinations in recent years. Could you talk more about that? Well, certainly, you know, uh, one of the reasons that we don't typically see measles, for example, in the United States, we don't, we don't typically see measles unless there's a, a local outbreak is because of the success of vaccination. Um, and the reporter used the word complacency, or at least uh, that was one reference to complacency. And that's because you think, well, even if I don't vaccinate, my kids aren't likely to get the disease because there's not much measles around. So there is an element of complacency that plays a part here as well. And what about in the United States? Is it complacency here, do you think, that has led to the uptake all over the country? Or is it the fact that parents are wary of the vaccine? Well... I think it's more the latter. I think it's more that parents are concerned about the safety of the vaccine. Um, if we see an outbreak here, it is imported because measles doesn't spread in the U.S. unless it's been imported from elsewhere. But then if there's a case that's imported, um, the reason it spreads is because there's people around that case who haven't been vaccinated. And then if we look at the reasons why, um, you know, often there may be several reasons why, but certainly parents uh, declining vaccines because they have concerns about the safety of measles vaccine is one of the causes. It's odd, isn't it? Because it's such an unfortunate disease in the sense that its symptoms are so easy to see and so horrible for parents to look at. You, you, you might think that that alone would encourage them to take the vaccine. Well, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, you know, typically you'd have a high fever initially runny nose and cough, and then you get that dramatic rash. But at the same time, um, pe parents haven't experienced that um, because they just haven't seen measles in their lifetime. So um, I think they're not, um, they're not very concerned about the disease because it's been eliminated in the, in the U.S. And can I just ask very briefly, Matthew, you're a researcher into this. What do you think might be the Correct. solution? Have you, have, you, have, you, have you got a solution up your sleeve that you could recommend? Um, yeah, we, we've done research to try to address parents who have vaccine concerns. And <clears throat> really what it is, is, it's about meeting them where they're at. It's about trying to address their concerns. And it's also about acknowledging areas where we don't know things. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to study vaccine safety more um, but at the same time, the vaccine appears to be highly safe. We know there's no association with autism, but we need to be able to meet parents where they're at, explain that to them. Matthew, thank you very much for your contribution. We appreciate it. Thanks very much.